well. Might as well. That's 123. And that way, when something on the final, you can say, no, you didn't teach that. And I can say, yeah, I did. And then we can go look, and you're like, oh, I didn't. <laughs> all right. So chapter 1.1. And what this is all about is uh, solving equations. And well, nice. One nice thing about you having me last semester is you remember. Well, you might not remember, but you'll be familiar with a lot of the way that. Yeah, you, you'll re, you'll be familiar with a lot of the way that like I'd like to talk about things and frame things. So, like solving. Is that color okay to see? Yeah. So solving means like so what a solution is is a value to make a statement true. Alright, so I didn't assign in any of these problems, but like for example, there's problems in the book that say like 8x minus 10 equals 6, and then it wants you to check if hmm, like x equals negative 2 is a solution. Oh, okay. Alright? So yeah, you gotta plug it in, and then the answer would be yes if it was true, right? If it equals 6, then. Right. So. So that's negative 16, right? Minus 10, that is not equal to 6. So no, negative 2 is, isn't a solution. So we're, I think you're good with that. Yeah, yeah. Okay. But, okay, so the reason I mention this, though, is like when if, you, if I ask you to solve 8x minus 10 equals 6, like when you're done, you're going to say x equals a number. You're right if that number is true, right? So like... Like, um, hmm. Well, well, I mean, if I don't, if I don't have, a, you know, something to input with me, if it's just the equation like that, to solve it. Yeah. So, so, what, well, here, here's what I'm saying. Like, when you're done, I'm not talking about how you solve it, right? Just like when you're done, if you say that's the answer, and it is. Um, hello. hello that's all right. So, how's your day? Busy? Yeah, that's what we were just saying. We're busy too, I'm tired. Yeah. Well, I'm glad you're here. We're worried. Yeah. Going? Good. Thanks. Perfect. A, a former student stopped by and gave me this Mexican gum. Oh, yeah, I feel special. <laughs> yeah. This one is, uh, I don't know what kind of flavor this is. Cherry. Cherry? Uh. And this one's banana. I like the you like the banana one? Mm -hmm. I never had it. Like. Yeah? Okay. Oh, it says right there. Right there. But but that means cherry? Or just fruit? It says, fruit. but it's cherry. Because the other one says yeah. platano. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well. Yeah, well, I believe you. It's going to be mostly cherry. All right, so here's what you're talking about. We're about talking about solving equations. And in your homework today, I'm not going to ask you any of these questions. But the reason I mentioned it is because it gives you an idea of what it means when you say an answer, right? So, like, I'm going to give you a problem like this. It's going to say solve this. And what it means is it means, here, write that in a different color. What number for x makes it true? That's what this is. That's what this is asking. When it says solve, it's asking you to figure out what number you could put here, and this side would equal six. Okay. So if you said x was equal to two, then then what that means is you're saying that if I put two for x that I get something that equals 6 over here. And that's true, right? Because 8 times 2 is 16. 16 minus 10 is 6. So that's true. So without talking about how to solve, like in general, that's what we're doing. We're trying to figure out what the number is. It's like it's a missing thing, right? So this is the other way I like to think about it. So 
let's say we had some equation like, um, I don't know, mm, Now, you might know the answer, you might not. doesn't matter. But this is like saying, it says 4 times a number minus 3, and it's going to be equal to 17. So, so here's the thing. I'd, if you can get your head around this, if you can read this like it's a question, it gets really easy. See, this is the idea right here. We don't know what this equals. I don't know what 4 times x is. I don't know what x is, so I don't know what 4 times x is, right? So when I read this, here's what I read. What minus 3 is 17? Right? The box method. The box method. That's right. That's right. So all you got to do is answer this question. And that what has to be uh, 20, right? Because 20 minus 3 is 17. So this has to be 20. So the answer to this question is 20. So that means that 4 times x is 20. Now, this is this says 4 times what? And all you got to do is answer the question. 5. Now let's check it. Hmm. If this is true, then that's the right answer. That's 20 minus 3 is 17. That's true. That means I'm right. We all good? The box method's going to get us we can't get for we can't get everywhere we need with the box method in this class. Last semester, he was in my class, and we did a bunch of problems like this, and sometimes they're really ugly looking, but if you just look at them like they're asking a question, they get easy. And, the, and well, hmm. so here's where, the, here's where this method gets in trouble. If we have more than one x, You have to get them, you have to combine them first. So, for example, let's say we had, oh, we'll do that one right there. Say x is minus 2x plus 9. See, we have an x on the left of the equal sign, and we have an x on the right of the equal sign. Before we can start solving this thing, we've got to get those x's together. And here is a, okay, pro tip. You know, we're going to have to get either this x on the left or this x on the right, right? How do you decide that? Yeah, yeah. Well, that's what I'm going to show you. You're going to move the smaller one. So negative 2 is smaller than 6, right? So I want to get rid of this one. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to add something to both sides of the equation so that this one is basically it's just gone, right? Now, before we do that, I, I, I want to like talk about adding stuff to both sides of an equation. Do, do you, guys, uh, I, you guys seem like you're both pretty good at math. That's, that's true, right? 7 equals 7, right? Yeah. OK, good, good. Now. If I do something to one side, it's not true anymore. Because I have to do the same thing to the other side. Now it's still true, right? Mm -hmm. Not true anymore. Because I didn't do the same thing. To the other. It doesn't even matter. What doesn't matter is it doesn't matter what I do to one side, but I have to do that same thing to the other. I didn't. I'm just doing the 1 and the 4 just to show you that I could do anything I want. But as long as I do the same thing to both sides, still good. So, for example, still good. Still the same. Same number. So what you do to one side, you got to do it to the other. The reason why we're doing things to both sides is to get this. We want x equals a number. That's our goal. So then the way we're going to do that 
we're going to get this one gone. So I need to add something, so that's 0. So what I'm going to really add is I'm going to add 2x. Now, a lot of times we write them underneath like this. The only reason we do that is because it saves space. Well, check this out. That's a minus 2 and a plus 2. That makes 0. Okay. Could, you, could you also subtract it? You could, it would but it wouldn't go away. It wouldn't go away. Yeah, watch. Let me show you. We'll come back to this in just a minute. So let's talk about let's talk about your question. Your question was, say we had 6x plus 1 equals negative 2x plus 9, right? What if we subtracted it, right? Well, that would be 4x, because 6 minus 2 is 4, right? Plus 1. That's negative 4x. It didn't go away. So we want to do the opposite. Because when we're when we're moving things from one side to the other, we're actually doing inverse operations. Because you know normally it's PEMDAS, yeah. parentheses or groups, and then exponents, multiplication, division, addition, and subtraction. But when you're solving, you go backwards. So we're going to do it, everything backwards. So anyway, okay. that's zero. This is eight x plus one equals nine. Hmm. This answer is going to be a fraction. That's okay. Subtract one from both sides, right? I like to do it that way better. Oh no, I take it back. It's not going to be a fraction. It's going to be. I wrote down one. The answer is one. <laughs> so eight times what is eight? X is equal to one. <coughs> we doing good? Um, do you want to try one? See how it goes. I mean, I mean. When I'm doing it and you're asking questions, it goes really great. Where it falls apart is when you try one, right? Yeah. yeah. So, but that's where you're gonna learn is uh, when you guys try. So, let's try. Hmm. Let's try this one right here. Hmm. Negative three m plus five equals five m minus three. So let's try that one. Let's just do, hmm, let's see, the timer says 1231, so let's do till 14.
Okay. <laughs> So it'll be one, right? <laughs> That's interesting. So you got different. Yeah. Well, well, you, so well, that means you did different. I that I, that I messed up when I was going through it. Yeah. yeah. But I don't know. It still came out to be one. So. The way we did it over here, we did it right. And it's eight over eight. Um, actually, I think it's the same either way. But let's see. So well, did you move this one? No. No. No, you did this one. Yeah. So you added it, right? Yeah. So like this, so plus 3m plus 3m, right? So th so that make th these two make zero, so it's gone. It's zero. You don't need to write plus zero. Mm -hmm. So you're left with five equals eight m minus three. That's where I messed up. I put I didn't add it to the other to the other side, and I was I, and I left I left five. So I was, I was oh left five equals five m minus three. Uh Okay. But I mean, that's the right way. I mean, yeah. yeah, this is right. Yeah. <laughs> so then you have to add the three, right? To both sides? And, and this also works because look, it says, it says what? Because this whole thing, you don't know what this whole thing is. Because you don't know what M is. So the, then you don't know what 8M is. Because, you know, you can't multiply 8 by something you don't know. So this thing, minus 3. This minus three is five. So so what minus three is five. That's really what it's asking. Right? That's what this is asking. So the answer to that question is eight. This thing right here, this has to be eight. Because eight minus three is five, right? So that thing has to be eight. That's why it's there. Or you could do it this way too. Same thing, right? This is the procedure, this is the idea, right? And then 8 equals 8 times what? 1. Yeah, I mean, it, it came out to be the same, but that way is like... Yeah. So you, you actually might have gotten lucky to get it right. Right. Which means like... Yeah, okay. So then this is right, though. Here, here let's check it, right? Let's check it. Let's see. So we have negative 3 plus 5, 5 minus 3. And so we're going to put a 1 in there. That's what we're going to do. We're going to check it. And and if this side equals the same thing as that side, we're good. And it does, because negative 3 plus 5 is 2. 5 minus 3 is 2. That's the same. So you're good. Yeah? Okay. So you messed up a little step, but you know what you're doing. And do you feel confident you know what you're doing, too? Yeah. Yeah? Good. Well, she actually, too, oh my God, she's like, Right, so he helped you, but you ended up helping him. That's good. That's why working together is good. Okay. Do you want to try another one? Yeah. Okay. Because, I mean, there's just a couple of us, right? So I, I, I want to make sure, I mean, it's really nice that we can kind of go at your pace a little more. So let's try, um, let's see, we already did that one. Hmm. Looking for one we can do. That's like re that's really really similar. Well, I'll just make one up. The answer might be a fraction, but that's okay. So let's do um, 7x plus 4. Uh, equals. Oh, let's do 9x. There, that's, that'll work. Oh, that's gonna be beautiful. Oh my goodness. Solve for x. Oh, this is a beautiful problem. I'm excited about this problem.
She's got it. <laughs> What'd you get, Ernesto? Well, I got one. I got one. I mean, four over nine. Mm. And then the other one, I got four. <laughs> so you tried it two ways. I had four over sixteen. Hmm. Okay. Because I did the same thing. I didn't do. The, I didn't do the side one side thing. I didn't subtract. Well, you do the one side. You have to do the yeah, same thing to the other. Because yeah. if you don't, it's not equal so anymore. Then, then, then four over nine is wrong. <laughs> yeah. Did you? Yeah, I, didn't, sub- I didn't do that. Did you subtract oh, seven? What'd you do wrong, Ernesto? Mm-hmm. Math. No, just, just <laughs> yeah, well, I didn't I, 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 yeah, I didn't subtract the. I didn't do it to the same. I didn't subtract the other side. Yeah, you have to do so. So. so yeah, four over two. Which is two. Which then four divided by two equals two. Right. So you didn't do this part right here. Equals two. Yeah. So you just did this part yeah. and just rocked with it from there. <laughs> <laughs> but yep. I know I have to do that side. Though. So you just got to slow down, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. See, math is like dating. So you got to. Or rewrite my notes. Yeah. See, math is like dating. You got to take your time. Otherwise, you make a stupid mistake and get your feelings hurt. Sad story. Okay. Now. I'm going to try one a little different. I know you're excited, right? What if we did one like... Hmm. Let me think here. I'm trying to come up with one that will give you a good answer. So this one's a little different, so let me kind of walk you through it, okay? The reason this one's tricky is you can't get this X together with this one because of the parentheses. So you have to get it out of the group first. And the, the there's a couple ways you can do it. We could divide everything by 5, but that would be ugly because you'd have a fraction and another fraction. So I wouldn't want to do that. Like, Let me give you an example of maybe when I would want to do that. Let's say I had something like this. Okay? Do you see how 5 goes into this and 5 goes into that? So this one I could actually divide by 5. But I have to do everything. And so here those reduce, right? So x minus 1 would equal 3x minus 4. And then you can solve it. Then it's just like the kind we did. So what we're doing, it's like this one has one more step. That you have to do before you can get to this. That's kind of all right. So what we have to do on on this one is distribute. Now you got to multiply it by everything inside the parentheses. Now this problem, just like that problem. Okay, shukis. <laughs> yes, no, maybe so. Does it make sense? Yeah, yeah. Yeah? Okay. So you guys can finish solving it too. I'll, I'll do it right here. That's not bad practice. Let's see. Hmm. 
So, Celine, I figured this setup would be easier because then you can see mm -hmm. than, than how we tried last time. Yeah. But you probably don't go by Celine, you probably go by Selene. Selene. Yeah. But Celine's okay. Everybody calls me Selene. Yeah. Or Selena. Selena? Yeah. Oh, that's weird. Hmm, weird. All right. So did you guys get two? Yeah. Yeah? Okay. So we're good. Do you want to try one of these? Yeah. Okay. Good idea. Listo, Ernesto? Yes. Let's do this, do this. Let's see. Oh, all right. Uh-oh. <coughs> what if I made this rude? Hmm. You might get a fraction. Hmm. Increíble. We have to get straight A's this semester, huh? Just two people. We gotta get straight A's, right? I mean, any question you have, I mean, you know, it's a small group, right? Because sometimes in a big class, if there's a bunch of people that are going, that are learning faster than you, you kind of get left behind, or maybe you feel weird, you know, asking. No. So this is perfect. Straight A's. <laughs> you know what you should do instead of doing it again, you should check it. Right? Yeah, just plug it in. So here's what I did. Here's how I do this one. So f after I distribute, right? Let's cover that part up. So you get you have 3x minus 6 and then 4x plus 4, right? Yeah. So this one 
is smaller. So I'm going to move that to the other side, right? But then I, if I think about it, I also know that if I move this to the other side over here, then I also have to move this to the left. So I'm going to do both at once. Do you see? Subtract 3x from both sides and subtract 4 all at one time. Yeah? Now, if you don't do that, it'll, you want to make more steps, that's fine. Ernesto, you look like you got a question. No, no, no. It's just like, I had a hell of a read. It's magic. Yeah, I know. It's math and magic. It's the magic. This, this pen, this pen has all the answers. All you got to do is start writing. Yeah. I tease my high school students, and on a test, they ask to borrow an eraser. Well, like, how do you, how do you oh. see that? Like, how do you see if I, you know, do it all? Instead Experience. Of, because here I'll show you. Yeah, here I'll show you what I've no, what I noticed, right? So, so I'm gonna subtract three x for sure. Okay, so then I got negative six, yeah, equals that's one x plus four. My next step is to gonna be to get this x by itself, so I'm gonna subtract four. But before I even do this math, I know at the same time I gotta get rid of this. My next step is that. Yeah, okay. That's yeah, all. So you see the whole Yeah, so I see where we're going and that's just experience. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Practice, that's all. So the other thing I do, uh, students ask for uh, an eraser on a test. So I'll give them an eraser and then I'll tell them it's magic. It only erases wrong answers. So if they erase the whole test and it all disappeared, it was all wrong anyway. Just start over. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Let's see. We have we have a couple more things kind of like this. Okay. Um, watch. Let's do. That looks really ugly, right? These probably both look really ugly, huh? Yes. Yeah. So I want to... So you know how I saw what to do on that other one? Made it easy. I want to share with you what I see on these to try to make them easy. Because they're really similar. Both of these are similar. Okay. You want to do this one first or the uglier one first? Matter. Does it matter? Okay. Because they both actually have the same idea. Look. Um, let's, the let's, the big one. Yeah, let's do this one first. So you see this is the left side, right? You see I have more than one X? I have to get those together like right away before I can even worry about this one. Before I can even worry about that, I have to get these together. But this one, you're not moving things from one side of the equal sign to the other. They're on the same side. This is the same, like, I would never write this. Like, this isn't a step. But I'm saying that this is the same. These are the same. Because you're adding, and you can change the order when you add. I just, yes, yeah, I put them next to each other. So when I look at this, this is what I recognize. This is what I see. But I don't write it down usually. I just go, oh wait, that's negative 6 and that's positive 2. So th that's negative 4. Plus 11. And now it's the same one as before. Same kind as we started earlier. You have an x on the left, another on the right. Get them together. The only thing to be careful of, this one's smaller. Then two, two yeah. yep. So we would want to add that. Oh, you're going to be mad again. 4x 
plus 4x. Now, before I even do the math, my next step is I'm going to have to get this number on the other side. Because you see, my x isn't going to be over here. It's going to be over here. So I don't want anything else over here. So I'm going to go ahead and subtract um, 21. Because, yeah, so now look. 0, negative 10, 2x, 0. Yeah? If you want to do that in two steps, that's fine. No problem. You can do it in one. So now you just have to solve this. That's negative 5. You know, the nice thing about these problems is I think that they're very approachable, which means they look really tricky, but after you get a little experience, it yeah. gets easier and easier. Yeah, and, and these answers are easy to check because these are integer answers, so the math is easy. It's not like an ugly decimal or a weird fraction that you have to plug in and do a whole bunch of difficult calculation. And on your homework, almost all the answers are like that. Or if they're fractions, they're easy ones. So, do you see like how we started this one here? That's how we start that one there. So why don't you guys try that one? That's a good idea. It's like ice cream for the brain. Mm Now that I see how you two are doing, I'm really glad there's not a like a kid. Right? Ernesto, you do you have kids? Oh yeah, I got two. Two kids, boys or girls? We got one 11 year old uh, boy. Uh oh. Oh boy. Eight years apart. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you're gonna tor you tortured yourself. Why? Uh eight years. You gotta clump them up, get it all over with. <laughs> yeah, well it wasn't it wasn't part of the plan, you know how that it is. never is. Yeah, so I know. You gotta, you know, That's good. What we got. <laughs> A happy accident. But uh, <laughs> oh yeah. Uh, really happy. No, the kids get along fine, they play with each other. Well the, At eight old, years they usually my, my older kids he loves that's cool. That's good. You catch her, you can't find so where's Sophia? And you go over there and manage them, they're both sitting in the bed watching TV or something. Oh yeah, that's yeah. good. Oh really? Oh really? Huh. She's seventeen years old. Oh. Seventeen, yeah. She's really Do you know what Sophia means? The yeah. name? Uh, knowledge. knowledge. Yep. Really? Yep. That's an old name, like like four thousand years old at least. So you have a, a daughter and do you have any other kids or just the daughter? Yeah, three. Three kids. Okay. How old? 2017 and um, 13. 2017, 13. The 20-year-old, the boy or a girl? Boy. Boy. And the 13? Girl. Girl. Okay. I have two, one boy and two girls. This one's kind of ugly because of the negative sign, or maybe just a little tricky. I mean, for me, anything that looks that has a negative, 
Anything that has a negative. Here's what I did. It's not done because of the negative, right? You're right. It's not done. No. That really means, this really means. Yeah, it's not done. It means, it means negative 1 times x equals negative 9. So you have to get that gone. So you want to divide by negative 1. So x is equal to positive 9. Ernesto, that's what you got? Yeah. Wow. I'm not. <laughs> you didn't get that? No. Oh, did you get? I think what, 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 you, what you guys would think is that negative. And that's why I, that's why you got to slow down with those, right? Once you... You know, it's funny, Ernesto, all those jokes I made about, like, math and dating and slowing down with negatives, they they help people learn. They do. Because if it sticks in your head, you're like, oh, wait, I better slow. There's yeah, a negative. Let's slow I down. Like, oh, Let's back the negative. truck up. And when you see me, you know, with the calculator, I'm just I'm taking my negative back because I'm really <laughs> bad at adding and subtracting and multiplying. So, so you see, well, yeah, that's what... I just what, check myself. That's why when you see me with the negative, yeah. I'm like, I'm doing the whole problem just no, that's good. So, so Celine, do you know what happened? Did you get no. this one? No. Oh. One. Oh. Well, did you get? Uh -huh. Oh, and you said it was five. Yeah. Oh, but it's negative three and plus two. That's negative one. Good? Good. Okay. We've got, okay, got two things left to learn. The first one's kind of easy, but you'll forget. Because it's like a, it's not a rule, but it's like something that does not happen a lot. And Yeah, I will. I'll, I'll write it down, of course. So... Yeah. Yeah, I see I'm recording it right now. You can see that. See, watch. I'll show you. Like. Watch. Let's see here. Yeah, so the class earlier today, that's it right there. I recorded the whole lesson and I put it on there. And I'll, I'll, I'll write it down for you so you can see it. It's uh, You can find it here. The Bearded Math Man. So on YouTube, you can just look that up. So like if you're going through your notes and you're like, oh man, I forgot, like, because you know, today's 123, right? And you're looking at your notes like, oh, how do we do this? Then maybe that'll help. I don't know. There's a lot of other stuff too, but maybe that can help. All right. So check this out. If we had an equation like, oh, I hate my life. <laughs> I wrote it down. I wrote down the, there, that's what I wrote down. The bearded math man. Yeah. So you, you can, you can look that up. The bearded math man. That's me. Yep. Or if you want, I can email you uh, the link, and then you can find it that way too. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. So let's say we were going to do an equation. Um, oh, let's say there. I wanted to fix it like this. Okay. Uh, equals. Let's say we had something like this. There, like that. So I don't, I don't want you to solve it yet. I want to talk about the three things get, that can happen. Three things can happen. 
So this isn't hard to understand, but it's going to be one of those things that you forget. But I hope not, because, yeah, I hope not. So number one, most common, usually, and this is what happened all day today, you have one answer. Right? That's what happened all day today. We ended up solving and x equals a number. No problem. Sometimes you have no answers. Like, there's not a value. That means there's no x that makes it true. And then the third thing, and we'll talk about all these, and I'll tell you how to see which one happened. Like, if this one happens, you know. You got it. I got my answer. But I'll, I'll explain how these two, what they look like, okay? Sometimes anything, any number for x can be an answer. So three things. Usually you get one answer. Sometimes you get no answer at all. It's like impossible. And sometimes anything in anything in the world could be an answer. Wait, see, when you say no answer, like no. There's not an answer. There's no number you could use for x that would make it true. It, it would be impossible. This one's impossible. So let me show you why. So so I'm going to tell you right ahead of time. This one is impossible. There's no answer. And here's why. So let's say we're doing our math, right? We get this. Don't, don't worry about the step here. I know you guys know how to do this, right? Uh -huh. Good so far, right? Now, um, I'm going to put those together. So I'm going to go ahead and write the step out so that it doesn't make you get confused. OK. Now i got to get the x's together, right? So I'm going to subtract 2x, subtract 2x. Look at this. 0. So minus 8 equals negative 9. Oh, that is not true. Like, you can't have that. That's impossible. Yeah. No answer. If you end up with something impossible, no answer. You want me to show you the, the any answer? Whoa. <laughs> 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 Sorry about that. <laughs> I was like, wow. That was kind of perfect timing, too. Hey, you want to see what it looks like when you have any answer? Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> be even better if the lights flickered. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So this is, this is what happens when there's no possible answer. Okay. Now, I'm going to write a different equation, but it's going to be similar. Any number you make up, any number in the whole world will work for this. Every number for x is true. And here's how you can tell. I'm going to go ahead and distribute. Look, they're the same. So if I subtract, if I wanted to, and I wanted to go ahead and subtract 2x from both sides, I get negative 8 equals negative 8. And that's true, no matter what. And, uh, yeah, that's, correct, that's true. So, like, I, I'll show you. So, okay. Yeah, go okay. ahead. With so, you. if you're left with yeah, negative eight, it, it, it equals the same number with yeah. no letters or anything that you're, you're good. Yeah. Yeah, you're, you're done. They match. Finished. It matches. It's true. So that means anything is an answer. So, like, like, let me give you an example. Like, I don't know. So then, give me a number. Like, what, what number do you think? Five. Okay. So watch. Five is going to work. Two times five minus eight. Right? Put the five there. Equals two. Five minus four. Yeah? Put the five there. Okay. Ten minus eight equals, hmm, let's see, two times one. 
because 5 minus 4 is 1. That's true, right? 2 equals 2, done. Okay, give me another number. Any number you want. 10, 10 minus 8 is equal to 2. Right, that's 2, and that's 2. So a, an answer, a solution, is a value that makes this true. So we just made up 5 and it worked. But pick, pick another number. We'll put it in. We'll see it works. 9. 9. So 2 times 9 minus 8 equals 2. 9 minus 4. 18 minus 8 equals 2 minus 5. Yeah, see? 10 equals 10. So, I mean, you're not going to get the, 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 the <coughs> same answer, but you're going to get the same true answer. You're Correct. Gonna you're going to get something that's true. That's true. Right. And that's a solution makes it true. Yeah. Right. So, it doesn't even matter what this is. Like, here it was 2, here it's 10. Pick another number, it's going to be another thing. Oh, okay. It was going to be negative 8 and negative 8 on. Yeah. Now I can it's a true answer. That's right. Anything, yeah. So so there's no answer. X can be anything. So the way you say that, you could you could say this, okay. In this class, you could just say infinite solutions. Infinite means there's as you know, there's many. It keeps going. Um, an, another way that people sometimes say this is they call it an identity. Which means it is what it is. Like, you know, your identity is who you are. And then what that means is this is the same as that. That's all it means. This one. If for, for this class, if you wanted to say no solution, that would be fine. <coughs> um, another way to say it is some people call it a contradiction. Which means they... A contradiction is like a rebuttal, like if you say something and somebody disagrees. These disagree with each other. They're not the same. They're actually not equal. It says they're equal, but they're, they can't be. Yeah. Claro? All right. So this isn't hard to understand, but it might be hard to remem remember. So, Okay, last thing. Oh, man, this is going to be happy fun times. Fractions. Dun, dun, dun. Okay, I'm going to show you how to. I'm going to show you a trick to make the fractions go away. Because we're going to solve something like, mm, let's do this one first. Let's do 4x minus 5 minus 14 over 15 equals x over 3. If there were no fractions, you would love this problem, right? Like, it wouldn't be so difficult. It would be easy. Like, if there, if this was like that, you would be good. Yeah. Right? Because then you could, you could handle that. So I'm going to show you how to make... It won't be the same numbers as that, but it'll be the same kind of problem. So what we have to do is we want to multiply everything. That's all terms, right? And, and when I say everything, I mean this and this and this. Everything. We're going to multiply everything by a number that will reduce with. That stands for with right there, right? The W with the slash with the denominators. So the tricky part is figuring out what that number is. But I think I can help you with that so it's not so hard. <coughs> When we're talking about a number, we're talking about one number, not three different numbers. That one number is going to be the lowest common multiple. The smallest thing that 5 and 15 and 3 go into. Mm, you're thinking the other way. You're thinking, what's the smallest thing that goes into 15? That'd be 3. No, we're saying, like, what's the smallest thing that 5 will go into? So, if, like, 
like you have a number over 5 and it can reduce and that same number over 15 and it reduces and the same number over 3 and it reduces we want to figure out what number that needs to be it's going to be 15 because 5 goes into 15 15 goes into 15 and 3 goes into 15 so watch watch so it's going to be like this it's going to be 15 over 1 and then, oh, i got to be careful that minus sign. So I'm going to write it right here. 15 over 1. 15 over 1. Now notice, it's not a, we're not getting a common denominator. We're not multiplying by 15 over 15. That's not what we're doing here. We're multiplying by 15 over 1. And then we are going to do our favorite thing, R-E-D-U-C-E. -E. Reduce. Because, washa. 5 goes into 15 three times. 5 goes into 5 one time. 3 times 4. X is 12. X. I don't want to do the rest yet. Do you see how that happened? 15 and 5. They can be reduced. So that's what I did. I reduced by 5. And that's what you want. If you have no fraction left, you did it right. And we're going to multiply everything the same. So this one's easy. 15 and 15, right? 1. So you're left with negative. 14. And then over here, 1 and 5, because 3 goes into 3 one time. 3 goes into 15 five times. 5 times x, 5 x. And now that's like the problem we started the whole class on. Now, earlier, I think I said this, and I maybe used it too soon, because it wasn't really worthy of, of what this is. This, this is. Uh huh. That is cool. I mean, because you have an ugly problem with all those fractions, and you can just you can multiply everything so that it reduces, and there's no fraction. And now, now I think you guys can handle that because you know you would subtract seven x or five x, and you get seven x minus fourteen equals zero. Don't forget the zero. That's equal to zero. There's nothing else there. So you have to write it. Like if there was a plus. You have to subtract it too, right? Yeah. yeah. And then so we're going to add 14. So 7x equals 14. So x equals oh, okay. 2. What do you think about that? That was cool. It was just that top part. Yeah, well, that's the, that's the, that's the new part. That's the trick, right? But it's nice because, okay, if you didn't do this way, you would have to get a common denominator. And then common denominators with those ugh, variables, it gets really ugly. It gets ugly fast. So here, let's, let's have you try one. And then, and then there's two things that can make this tricky. And so I want to make sure we can do the, the most basic kind first. So, listo. Here we go. Your turn. 3x divided by 2. Mas x divided by 6 equals negative 5 over 3. Now don't forget your big idea. Here, I'll show you your big idea in case you forget. Here's the big idea right here. You want to multiply everything by some, with just one number, so that this and this and this can reduce. So you have to figure out what number that is. That's the trick. Lowest common multiple. <coughs> Increíble.
Oh, no, that's not what we want to do. I was going to send you it right now. I was going to send you the thing. Yeah, that's me. Okay, there we go. So I sent it. Well. You guys have this one or not yet? Not yet? Not yet. Okay. No problema. What did you multiply by? Six over one. That's perfect. But then. Then you get in trouble. Yeah. Did you use six over one also? Yeah. Okay, so I'll help you. Let's see. I don't want you to get frustrated and like confused, yeah. right? Yeah. So it's six over one. Six over one. Six over one. Good. Mm -hmm. Okay. Three, yeah. Three times three, nine. Yeah? Oh, yeah. So you multiply uh, across. Yeah, you reduce and then you multiply. Oh, you added. <laughs> you added 3 plus 3, right? Yeah. So 6. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it happens. I do it all the time. That's why I laughed. Because so I do it all the time. Six six, but 6 times 2 is 12, right? But you're not multiplying the 6 and the 12. So, so here's what you got. You have 6... Like this right here. So we really need is a little line. It's like this. Like the size confusing me. Do you know how you can change the order when you're multiplying? Like two times mm -hmm. one is the same as one times two. Like when you're when you have fractions, you're multiplying the top and the bottom, yeah. So uh, this would be the same. You can change the order when you multiply. We don't usually rewrite it, but this is what's happening. Like, like we're gonna, really going to put the 2 here, and we're going to put the 1 there. Because this equals 3. 6 divided by yeah, 2 is 3. And, and, and 3 times 3 over 1 is, you know, 9. So that's what we did, but we didn't write the whole thing out like that. So yeah, you're just reducing. Because this is division. 2 doesn't go into 3, so you can't reduce that, but 2 does go into 6 3 times. And 2 goes into 2 1 time, of course. So then you have 3 times 3 is 9. But this one's easier, right? Because 6 divided by 6 is 1, and so you're just left with 1x. And I'll let you see if you can fix that one, that part. <clears throat> I won't hog it all up. I'll, I'll share. Right, right. So yeah, so that's two. 
So this is one, right? That's one, and that's two. One divided by one. One times one is one. You don't even worry about it. Negative five times two. Negative 5 divided by 1 is... Negative 5. Negative 5, but then you're left with the fraction 2 over negative 5. That's why I'm getting confused. Oh, but it's not 2 over negative 5. It's, it's, here's what you have. You have negative 5 over 1 times 2 over 1. That's what this whole thing is going to be. That. And so you get negative 10 over 1. But you don't need to write over 1. That's just negative 10. Yep. 3 goes into 3 one time. 3 goes into 6 two times. Because 3 doesn't go into 5. But it's like this. It's like this. It's like, <clears throat> they say we had 10 times, I don't know, 7 divided by 7. And it's all, mul this is multiplying up here, right? Well, 10 doesn't go into, 7 doesn't go into 10, so you can't reduce that. But 7 does go into 7 one time. So that's just 10. But if you didn't reduce it, here's what you'd get. Let's say we didn't reduce it. You would get 70 divided by 7. And then you do that math and you get 10. Let's say you didn't reduce this one right here. So here, I'll, I'll rewrite it, okay? Because I want to show you that you still get the same thing. Okay. So we're going to multiply by 6 over 1, yeah? 6 over 1. So that's going to be 18 over 2 by 6 over 1. So that's 6x over 6. 6 over 1. Negative 30 over 3. And you can reduce that. That's 9 plus 6 goes into 6 one time. 30 divided by 3 is 10. Same thing. See, that's how I was saying. That's how I was saying. So I was getting confused. Because <coughs> right now you said if you if you if your number on the bottom is a fraction, then you're wrong or something. So I, I was trying to avoid having a fraction. Yeah. So we don't have fraction. Like here, but you can reduce them. So you have no fraction left. It's, but it's just okay. But it's okay to outside. If you want to do it and this I, way, you can do it that way. Yeah. I would encourage you to try this way because it's quicker quicker because it's less steps, less steps, less chance of messing, of making a mistake. But either way is fine. And so then I think x equals negative 1. Okay. <clears throat> I mean, yeah, if, 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 I, if I do that, I get it. Because right now when I, when I was, okay. you know, had the 6 over the 1, I was, I was trying to multiply, but then I was like, I'm getting two numbers. You know, how do I get one number? The only thing that makes me... You get two, the only way you get one number is you get just, yeah, I was just doing that second step. The only thing that makes me nervous is on the more difficult one of these. I'll show you. Well, yeah, I'll show you. I'll show you one. Um, watch, like this. <clears throat> Let's say we had 2x plus 1 divided by 3. This might be one of your homework questions, and I would suggest if you see this in your homework, don't look at your notes until you get your answer. Because otherwise you trick yourself. This one has an answer that's a fraction. Like your total answer when you're done, x equals, it's a fraction. <coughs> so we have to figure out what, what can we multiply by that 3, 4, and 12 go into. So that's 12, right? Oh. Uh, there you go. <laughs> Sorry about that. Okay, so you see why this is ugly now? Yeah. <laughs> and this one's really, really tricky because <coughs> of that negative sign right there. Man. I like the book we're using mostly, but there's only two examples like this, and they're both negative. This negative in this kind of problem is going to make big problems. and I'll, So we're going to have to be really careful with that. And, I, and it, it's kind of frustrating because I just want to get to this part. I don't even want to worry about the negative right now, but we'll be all right. We can handle this. Okay. <coughs> 12 over 1. 12 over 1. 12 over 1. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Look, 3 goes into 12 four times. This is division. 
This one is dividing into that one. It's 3 divided into 12. That's 4. And then you need to write some parentheses. You see where I got the 4? It's 3 goes into 12 four times. Are you getting? 3 goes into 12 four times. Yeah. yeah, you're dividing this number into that number. And that's where we got 4. Because this one's on the top, right? See, that's it. And that's on the bottom. And, and it's, so it's really 12 over 3, which is 4. Yeah, yep, just like that. Okay, now here, here we have to be careful. Don't forget that minus sign. It's there. That's 3. And then seis x minus 1. And then, am I going too fast? Are you ready? No. We're good. And that's 1. So you're just left with negative. That part was easy. Now I think you know how to do this one too. It's a little different looking than the ones we did earlier, but I think you can handle it because you have to get these parentheses gone. So to do that, you distribute, right. But just be careful because here you're multiplying by a negative. So let's do this one. Let's do this one first, okay? So that's going to be negative 18x, and then it's going to be plus 3. See, that's right there, and a negative times a negative is positive. So Lee, the thing everybody gets wrong is they write negative 3 right here. That's what everybody, always. So you got to be careful with that. This part, no problem. 8x plus 4 equals negative 5. <coughs> Man, we are rock solid. We're just killing it today. We're Gucci, Ernesto. Oh, yeah. We are. I don't know what that means. <laughs> it means we're doing awesome. Gucci, I hear all the kids saying Gucci. Oh, yeah, it just means it's great. It means it's the, like, top. That's it. Yeah, yeah, it's the best. Okay, so now we have to put these together. They're on the same side of the equal sign, right? They're both on the left. So we're just going to combine like terms. So that's going to be negative 10x. And then plus 7 equals negative 5. Yeah. And then, yeah, you can just, yeah. There, there's some tricky stuff in here, though, that, that, I mean, it's the beginning of the semester. You might have forgotten how to do some stuff. So, you know, we're going to subtract 7. Negative minus a negative is, you know, still negative because you're subtracting. And there's two things here you have to be careful of. I don't want to go too fast. I want to make sure you're ready. First thing you got to be careful of, when you divide by, when you divide a neg, like here, look, when you divide a negative by a negative, that's positive, right? So that's just positive 1x. This is going to be positive. But the thing is, we're not done. We can reduce. That can be reduced. That's equal by 2. There's your answer. If you did all this work, this would be a lot of, if this was a test, this would be worth one, two, three, f this would be worth four to five points. And it would make me sad if you wrote this as your answer, you would, only, you would lose one point. You have to reduce. R-E-D-U-C-E. -E. Yeah. Celine, how are we doing? Good. Good? Good. And that's still we're doing good? Yeah, we did. Yeah, I got the, the hang on. The, this part's tricky, right? So that's what you're going to have to practice. Yeah, that's what I'm going to have to practice. But I, I, I got a little bit more of uh, an idea of it. Yeah. The way when you did the, you know, the whole thing. Yeah. yeah. So that's the way I was doing it. I was like, oh, man, that's Yeah, when you saw the whole thing written out. Like, but it's okay to do that. Then. Yeah, yeah. I thought it was wrong. I was like, I'm going to do something wrong. But if you did it like on this one, you'd get confused. Yeah. Yeah. Because, yeah. yeah. Now I get an idea, I'll have it, I'll have it. Okay. So, do you want to try one? Last one for the day. Sure. And then we're D-O-N-E finished. Which is a couple minutes early, but I mean, that's what we had to learn, and we took our time. I think you guys are doing pretty good. So here we go. 4x plus 3 divided by 9 minus 2x 
plus 1 divided by 2 equals 1 sixth. And of course, we're going to solve for x. So we have a 2, a 6, and a 9. Ooh, that one's kind of ugly. Wow, that's weird. This one's harder than the last one, I think. 2, 6, and 9. Because the other one was easier because the biggest number has been the answer, but here it's not. So if you're stuck, I'll show you a, a way you can figure this out. So pick the biggest number. And then you just write down all the multiples. So 9... 18, 27, 36. Look for the smallest one these go into. Right there. Yeah. Merry Christmas. <laughs> now, Ernesto should be good at that because we learned that last semester, but he probably forgot anyway, huh? <laughs> Yeah, no. My daughter, my youngest daughter, texted me earlier. She's like, I'm having trouble on math. She's like, I haven't done it for two years. And I was laughing because I forgot how to do a math problem today in the high school class because I haven't done it for one year. And I teach math. You forget. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And then that's when you have to figure it out. 